In this lesson, I'll introduce you to using the ggplot2 package in R. First, I'll show you how to use qplot to create some basic data visualizations, such as bar graphs, histograms, scatter plots, and line graphs. Next, I'll move into using the ggplot function to create box plots and density graphs. Then, we'll discuss how to modify our graphs with different coordinate systems and faceting. Lastly, I'll show you how to change the aesthetics of your data visualization. So ggplot2 is a package for R based on something called the grammar of graphics. This is essentially a system that breaks down graphs into smaller elements or parameters so that users can then piece together those elements in various ways to create new graphs. The first thing that you'll want to do is set your working directory. Next, make sure that you have ggplot2 installed. So let's go to the packages tab and type in ggplot2. For this tutorial, we'll be working with health indicators from the World Bank. Specifically, we'll be looking at developing countries in South Asia. So we're going to import the data sets. And you can do this by going to the Import tab. You're going to want to rename your data sets to a simple, shorter variable name so it's easy to reference throughout this tutorial. With the following commands, let's change pakistan.childhiv to HIV and South Asia to SA. Now we're ready to start creating graphs. We'll begin with qplot or quickplot, which has a simple syntax and creates a complete plot using the following format. Next, we're going again into different types of graphs we can make with this package. Let's begin with a bar graph. On the x-axis, we will plot the year, and on the y-axis, we will plot a variable called child HIV, which is the number of children ages 0 through 14 living with HIV. We are referencing the HIV data set. Our geom is bar, and we have graph titles and axis titles. What's important to note here is the stat parameter. If you want y to represent the count of cases, use stat equals bin, and don't map a variable to y. If you want y to represent values in the data, use stat equals identity. You can also see that we added another element that references the x-axis scale. By using the breaks parameter, we can manipulate what exactly gets displayed on the x-axis. For example, we want to start at 2001 and end at 2013, but we want one year interval so that every year in the data set is shown. Press enter and on the right you can see your data visualization. Let's try the histogram now. Change geom to histogram and change the stat to bin. We can also adjust the width of the histogram's bars with the bin width parameter. To create a line graph, go back to stat identity and add back the additional x scale breaks. Lastly, let's quickly create a point graph by changing the geom to point. Now that we have gone through some simple qplot, let's begin to use the ggplot function. Compared to qplot, ggplot provides more control and has a slightly different format that primarily utilizes layers. To add a new layer to a plot, use the plus sign. We saw this type of layering process with the scale underscore continuous breaks in the previous plot. You can begin a plot by referencing the data set, then use the function AES, which is short for aesthetics, and then in the parentheses type your x and y variable. So type in plus geom point, bar, line, or whatever graph you're trying to make. Another advanced thing you can do with ggplot 
is reference specific rows and columns in your data to create data frames. Next to where you type the name of your data set, put brackets and type the range of the row numbers you want to use and then the range of the column numbers you want to use. Now that we have the basics of the ggplot function, let's practice by creating a new type of graph called the density graph. Let's look at the life expectancy at birth in 2013 in the developing South Asian region. We're going to reference these specific rows and columns. We're going to use the geom density function, which has this Gaussian specifier. Gaussian is just another name for the normal distribution, which is what most density graphs are based on. Lastly, let's title the x-axis. We can also create box plots with ggplot comparing the life expectancies in 2001 to 2013. So those are the major types of graphs that you can create with the ggplot package. Now we'll discuss some more types of layers you can add to create complex data visualizations. We can modify the coordinate systems, which provide axes and grid lines for your graphs. Normally, graphs use the Cartesian coordinate system. Let's provide the X and Y Cartesian coordinate limits. You can also flip the Cartesian coordinates with this layer. Another way to modify your graphs is through faceting. This option allows you to divide a plot into subplots and display small multiples. It is also commonly referred to as conditioning, latticing, or trellising your graphs. The basic format of faceting is as follows. To the left of the tilde, reference which variable you want as your rows. To the right of the tilde, reference the variable you want as your columns. And if you don't want to put a variable, do not leave the side blank. Put a period instead. Install and load the scales package before faceting. Here's a graph that facets countries into columns. This graph facets countries into rows. Lastly, I'll show you how to change the aesthetics of your visualizations. To change the inside color of a bar, type fill equals and enter the color you want. Since this graph only has one color, we don't need a color legend. So we can remove it by adding plus guides fill equals false. To use a color scale in a variable, type in color equals. And to use a size scale in a variable, type in size equals. There are many different themes that you can apply to your plots. Classic, black and white, minimal themes, Economist, and Tufty inspired themes. To summarize, in this tutorial we use the qplot function and the ggplot function to create a series of basic data visualizations such as bar graphs, histograms, scatter plots, line graphs, box plots, and density graphs. Then we looked into how to modify our graphs using different coordinate systems and faceting. Then we changed some of the aesthetics of our data visualizations and applied multiple themes such as the economist theme and the Tufty themes.